Hello guys, welcome to the web scraping using Python course. In this particular lesson, we are going to fetch live share prices from the stock market. Let's jump right into it. Uh, now, the current time is 12, 14 p.m. IST and I'm going to be fetching uh, live share prices from Yahoo Finance. Mm. Right, here I go. I'll quickly open a new Python notebook. Now the Yahoo Finance website is a bit slow today. Or maybe it's my network. Uh, now this is going to be fetch live share prices. Okay, I quickly import the libraries that we've been needing. So we'll need requests, we'll need BS4, and from BS4, we also need beautiful soup. Uh, let us, yep. All right, so let's see which stock is trending okay so axis bank and indusin bank let's go to indusin bank and figure out the live share prices okay so this is what we need Oh, 43.8 is the current share price let us quickly inspect this element now we can see that the share price is actually moving pretty fast today it's been volatile and let's take a quick look so it the, it closed at 407 yesterday and it opened at 445 okay there must have been a news which reminds me that you guys should watch the uh, news fetching scraper code that we had written. Okay, here you go. So let's inspect. So the the okay. So my current share price is embedded in span. So span seems to be it, but. I don't think the class for that is unique so let's let's go up a little okay okay so this this seems to be the div all right now there's one div here let's quickly try this so control C so we'll be looking for this particular class among all the divs and then see whether we get anything if we don't then we'll have to move up and probably check for this particular class all right so let's just set it up quickly. My URL is going to be Control C, Control V. So this is my URL, and let's quickly set the headers. Now you guys will remember from the previous videos that user agent here is needed because. Uh, because some of the websites do not allow scripts to run on their pages because this this is like a crawler and if if the crawler has actually a user agent then it's like spoofing and saying that okay this is my user agent even though it's just a crawler now let's quickly run navigator dot user agent and fetch this Control C and Control V. Right, so this works as my header. Now I have the URL, I have the headers. Now get the requests. So requests.get URL, and I'm going to pass my headers here. 
headers. Uh, yep. Now let's see whether it's able to get it. Now 443 is the current price. Yes, seems to be very active today. Okay, perfect. So this ran. Now let's set up our soup. BS4. Beautiful soup. And what we need is our dot text and we need the HTML dot parser. Perfect. So we have the soup soup element. Let's quickly find soup dot find all. So I'm going to print out all the div elements here right now because that is what we needed. Perfect. So we have the data. Oh, uh, just so that we do not lose out on the trend here, I'm quickly going to copy this and. The class that we need here is this. Now let's see whether we get anything. Okay, so this is an empty list, which means that we need to go up. Uh, let's try this. Control C. And hopefully this works. Okay, again an empty list which means we need to go up now let's see okay so this is the div that has the whole uh, banner now i'll double click copy and paste this here okay perfect so this works now we we've got the whole div element now what we have is this whole div element this one Inside that, there are certain div classes. Okay. And there's span. And there's my number. So I want to go to the span element. Now let's see what we can do here. So I just quickly get the first one. Then I'm going to find all Span. Perfect. Now let's try the first one again. 443.65. Here it is. Right. Right. So this 443.65 is actually now 444. And 444. Right. So we need to we need to fetch the live share prices. Now this has been static now and will always return 443 because our requests are not going again. We've saved that in R. Let's do one thing. Let's quickly write a loop. So while uh, true, now while true is going to keep printing this forever. So, uh, okay, I'm going to leave this bit for the next piece of code, but C control V control C control V and control C control V. So if I run this block of code again, let's see what I get. I'm sure it won't be 443.65, it is going to be 443.3 looks like 35 443.2 443.45. Four now this is a little slow because of again connectivity issues and because it's a scraper but this is really good to still fetch uh, stock prices uh, for shorter durations because usually uh, websites do not have such uh, minute information and they tend to give daily stock data now okay 443.2 443 was the current so it changed but this seems to work, so I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste this here and hope that this works. So I'm going to, if, okay, this I can just manually interrupt for the time being. 
let's see how this works right now what do you guys think do you think the share prices are going to go up or down from 443.2 that was the last price that we had fetched now is there something that we are missing yes there is so what we are missing is let's interrupt the kernel and make sure we print this otherwise we are waiting for something that is never going to happen right so so guys web scraping is really really helpful and i'm just hoping that this works because the share prices seem to just go up and up it's 444 right now and 443.3 was my last fetched price uh, what else do you think will be useful here right so it, it went up and it'll be really useful to see the amount of time that we take to get one price now for that what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the date time library in Python and we're going to fetch the current prices along with the current date time so we, we get the timestamp and then we can calculate the time difference between the two fetched prices and then see uh, how long we're taking. So it's it's usually around, what, five, six seconds, I'm guessing. So every six seconds, we're fetching the share price. So if we want minute-wise data, this is really helpful because uh, we can we can manage with this, with the start and the end. And we can ignore a bit of uh, second-wise data. And for daily data, this is really, really good. So this seems to work, and this is working pretty good. Now, it will also be good to have a line chart. So I'm going to have all of this in the coming lessons. And make sure you guys watch that. And subscribe. Subscribe. Thank you.